Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 295 of the RRBG podcast. This episode is also brought to you by Kill Cliff. My friends over at Kill Cliff make the best energy drink you can buy in the market today. Clean energy, none of that crap that they put in Monster or any of those Red Bulls. No sugar, just clean power for all the grind you're going to have to put in today. And if you're not grinding today and you just want to relax, they also have CBD drinks to help you recover from any injuries you may have, any kind of inflammation. Maybe you went a little too hard at the gym. CBD drink will get you right back on track. Go to their website, killcliff.com. Check out all their different flavors. My personal favorite Ignite drink is the Cherry Limeade. And in the CBD category, you have to try the Joe Rogan Special. It's the Flaming Joe Pineapple with Jalapeno. It's not that spicy. You just get a little bit of a kick at the end. It's delicious. Go to killcliff.com and tell them that RRBG sent you. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends at Saints Joints. Go to saintsjoints.com to check out all the options that they have. They have these amazing packages with pre-roll joints, which will have pre-rolls from either side of the strain spectrum, either indica or sativa, and they even have multi-strain collections. Pick up one of their amazing Book of Saints. They currently have two volumes, volume two being a special Halloween edition. It looks like the Necronomicon. It's amazing. They're currently available in Washington and Oregon and will soon be available in California. Go to saintsjoints.com and tell them that RRBG sent you. This episode is also brought to you by our friends at Thunder King Coffee. Thunder King provides organic air-roasted coffee straight out of Costa Mesa, California. It's seriously some of the best coffee I've ever had. My personal favorite is the Positive Morning Attitude. I order two pounds of this almost every two weeks because I just can't get enough. But they also have bottled cold brew. They have their special California Christmas peppermint cold brew out right now. You can order it from their website. So go to thunderkingcoffee.com and check it out. Support small independent businesses, people. In this episode, I talk to the legendary Dennis Lixon of Refused and Invasion and Noise Conspiracy and... And Venice Casino and Fake Names, lots of bands. The guy is a prolific musician, political activist. You may have heard Refuse's music in the video game Cyberpunk 2077. Or you may have checked out their latest record, War Music. That's a fantastic album. We talked about that. We talked about The Shape of Punk to Come, coming up on their 25th anniversary of that. We talked a lot about politics. We talked about the pandemic. We talked about his love of music. It was a really great conversation, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Make sure to follow him at Dennis Lixon on all the social medias. Make sure to pick up the new Invasion record, Let the Night Love You. It's fantastic. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the little bell. All the little things there that will help us fight the system together. And if you get a chance, check out our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash rrbg and support the show. Cheers. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I am being joined by the often imitated, never duplicated, Dennis Lixon of Refuse and Invasion. How are you, brother? I'm pretty good. How are you, man? I'm all right. I'm uh, feeling better. I actually, you know, due to me not understanding time zones, I actually woke up at one o'clock this morning to do the podcast. Let's do this interview now. No way. It's in 12 hours. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, uh, you know, I set an alarm. I was like, I guess I have to, it's fine. I've done worse. I've done like 5 a.m. Yeah. for some people in, in, in uh, Europe that crazy time zone differences. So I was, you know, I was ready. I was ready for it. <laughs> and, uh, I think from our communication, you've been ready for a while. <laughs> That's true. We've been trying to do this podcast for a long time. So I'm really happy that uh, we're finally doing it. Uh, th- yes, thank you so for I. thank you for joining me. Um, first off, let's talk a little bit about Invasion. Uh, I know you guys yes. recently put out an album. Yep. Uh, so tell me a little bit about it. I know you know it's it's been around for a very long time. You know, people may not realize that it's from the '90s almost, right? 
Well, the band, yeah, I mean, Invasion is, uh, I mean, we, we started as the Lost Patrol band, which played power pop. And then, I mean, Invasions, we've been around for a good, I'd say it's almost 15 years, wow. kind of low key for the first couple of records. And then we've done three records in English. We did two records in Swedish before that. Oh, okay. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, I would say Refuse this is the main band, but Refuse is very spotty in when we actually do stuff. We're very, you know, few and far in between. Uh, so Invasion is probably the band that I spend the most time working on. Okay. And um, we just put out a new record in June called Let the Night Love You, which uh, I think it's a fantastic little record we have. Um, it was recorded before the pandemic and it was supposed to come out in 2020, mm. but we all know what happened. So it's, it, it's one of those, like it's just been sitting frustrated, you know, a bit, bit frustrating just to wait for something to come out. And then the record came out, we did a couple of shows and then our keyboard player, uh, she had a kid. So ah. we had to take, take a little bit of a break, but uh, we're, we're going to start touring well, now, I guess after the summer. So we're going to start playing shows again. I'm very excited. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, I was listening to the album uh, and, and, you know, it's listed as post-punk, but I feel like they're just throwing that tag on you now wherever, whenever you do something. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I mean, it definitely when, uh, when we started Invasion, it was definitely more of a post-punk feel to it. Not sure what the latest record is really. I mean... I don't know. It, it's good yeah. music. Yeah, it feels very, you know, electronic, synth heavy, but almost 80s-ish. Yeah, you know, kind of ish. Yeah. yeah. So what are, what are your, like, main influences in that? Like, what do you... I know you, you don't try to copy anyone, but, you know, there's obviously certain bands that influenced that style of, like, 80s. So what, what yeah, would yeah. you say? Um, It's tricky. I think it, it's interesting because Andre, the drummer, is the main songwriter he mm. writes most of the, the the bulk of the music and he just listens to new music he he's basically one of those dudes i mean he's uh he's the he's the guy that has on his arm he has a tattoo that says 80s hardcore <laughs> okay <laughs> a very good tattoo but i mean when he when it comes to that type of more uh synth heavy industrial tinged music he listens to a lot of new music hmm. i don't think i mean Obviously, you have your uh, your uh, 80s post-punk like Bauhaus and Depeche Mode and, and that kind of stuff. But I, I think his influences are way more with like, you know, Soft Moon or or just that that type of scene, basically. But I mean, you know, it's it's um, it is interesting because the, the older you get, the, the the less you care about, you know, what, what you want to sound like. Mm. You know what I mean? Because when, yeah. when you're young, it's like you start a band and you go into a practice space and someone says, this band, we're going to sound like this band. Yeah, right. And that's kind of how you, how you start. And with Invasion, it's like you take a little bit of everything, a little piece here, a little piece there, and then, then you try to come up with something that's your own. We, we did, I must, I must admit, which I didn't think about at all when we were writing the record, but we did get a lot of Depeche Mode comparisons in the reviews for the record, which I was... A little bit surprised, but then listening to it, I'm like, eh, maybe not. It it definitely has a little bit of that uh that feel to it. That it it is interesting because um, all right, it makes sense because the Pesh Mode were like a synth band mm -hmm. that discovered rock music, and then yeah. they they did the their their records with like the the weird crossover between synth and rock. We're definitely the opposite. We're definitely like a rock band that discovers synth music. So maybe, maybe it makes sense. I don't know. I guess. I, yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I grew up, you know, I listened to a lot of different types of music, uh, a lot of punk music growing up, a lot of, you know, Latin music, but also a lot of gothy, synthy, industrial type music as well. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I, it's right up my alley and, uh, my wife, yeah. is, my wife is into it as well. So she, she's, you know, she's into it, but I, I noticed you guys, <clears throat> you were gone for, from 2016, you took a break, I guess, with Invasion. 
Uh, no, refuse just started touring. Oh, okay, all right. So that, that was it. <laughs> it's like it's one of those like uh, you know like like invasion. We do take too much time in between the records. Uh, just because of life, you know, like we, we, you put out a record, then you work hard for a year and then I'm off doing other stuff. And the other people in invasion also have other projects. It's like one of those things where like, you know, you get really intense for a period of time. And I mean, we, we had some bad luck, as I said, like we had a record slated to come out in, in, um, like May of 2020 and the pandemic hit and the pandemic, uh, hitting made the record label drop us and they were like oh we you know we need to restructure the record label so you know it, it's 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 been one of those bands a lot of starts and stops for invasion it's kind of frustrating but you know it, it is what it is yeah but at least you got it out you know and it, and now you know yeah you played yeah. some shows you got you know yeah. uh like you're on a break right now because of maternity leave but still like it's still there's a promising future there oh yeah yeah, yeah. i'm super excited uh, just playing the new songs live was, was a lot of fun. And uh, we're actually doing a TV show in Sweden uh, next weekend. So we're going to be re restarting the whole campaign. I'm very excited about that. Very cool. Like you mean like a, like a late night show where you perform? Yes. Oh, very it's cool. a late night show in Sweden. But the demographic's quite old. So it'll be <laughs> interesting <laughs> to, see, to see what that does. But yeah, it's cool. It's cool to kind of restart again. Uh, after, I mean, Kiki, she had a kid like three weeks ago. So it's kind of, I mean, fucking kudos to her to be like, yeah, I'll come up and play. I'm like, that's rad. So Hell yeah. Yeah. Fun. I mean, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> if, <laughs> I know that that's a painful experience. I'd be in bed for months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. So that, that's cool. And then we have a, we have a European tour lined up and, uh, this fall and we have some, Swedish dates lined up so it's it's exciting yeah it's interesting that you brought up that you know the older you get you stop caring about what you sound like but it's not just that it's also you know you stop caring about these weird like e elite uh in criticisms that you do with certain genres like I, you know, I, when I was in my twenties, I was very like rigid into what I was listening to. I'm like, I have to only listen to heavy music and the heavier, the better, you know? And then now in my forties, I'm exploring all these things and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember listening to that when I was a kid and liking it and like uh, allowing myself to enjoy more as opposed to yeah. just being angry about the type of music it is, you know? Yeah. I, I think it's like, um, you relax a little bit and, um, I think it's also something to be said about, um, uh, the the joy of music because I I I'm with you like when the formative years identity becomes maybe more important than the music mm. and also in your formative years when you are like I'm like, I mean, into hardcore you listen to a lot of bad hardcore <laughs> because it was hardcore yeah. <laughs> Is there, you know so as you grow older it doesn't really apply it doesn't you know sure we all have friends that are like still kind of narrow-minded in in how they approach musical discoveries but i was one of those people that, that like when i discovered punk and hardcore it, it, it expanded my mind i was like anything's possible i can listen to anything mm. uh, and the older i get the more relaxed i am about because sometimes people ask me oh what's your guilty pleasure i'm like i have no guilty pleasures yeah. It's all great. If I like it, it's great. It doesn't matter how credible or cool it is. You know, it's just it's just great. So um, it is also interesting revisiting stuff that you thought were kind of lame mm -hmm. back in the day with that open mind and be like, is this actually lame or was it just a pose from, you know, right. like, was it just a pose? And then... Um, you can discover some cool stuff when you're like, oh, wow, this is actually, I get what people were into this. So, you know, I get what, you know, so I, it's, it's just music. is just, if your mind is open, there's so much great music out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I've changed so much, even in the recent years, like I, you know, I used to be a very vocal about how much I didn't like Nickelback. I still don't really listen to them, but now instead of talking shit, I'm just like, yeah, well, you know, they're doing it. They're selling millions of records. Let them do it, you know, and people love it and whatever. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, it's interesting because um, I think that 
I get that. And, and sometimes I'm like, it kind of makes sense. You know, people can do whatever they want. It's, it's fine. But there's something to be said about when. All right. So here's my take on it. I don't know what the, the latest boy band is, whatever, you know, sure. that's, I don't really care. They can do whatever they want to do. But as soon as stuff gets kind of adjacent to what, what I'm doing, it gets a bit more like Nickelback. I'm like, I don't know about that. That's a bit weird because then people can come up with me and say like, oh, you play rock music. I like rock. I like Nickelback. And I'm like, ah, it's not really that, you know, it's not really the same thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but if someone says, you know, I'm into um, whatever, Harry Styles or something, I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You know, it's we're not really, you know, we're not – we're not doing the same thing, basically. Sure, yeah. yeah. There's some, I think for me, maybe as a musician, some of the bad rock out there, it's it's still a bit touchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bad rock out there. That's I, so I stopped, really I stopped listening bad. to the radio. I can't listen to the radio. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I haven't, yeah, I haven't listened to the radio forever. And uh, I have a TV, but I have no channels at all. So, I, you know, I don't really, you know. Um, also about getting we're not this whole conversation should not be about us getting older <laughs> but um as i grow older i'm i really want to pick and choose my cultural intake mm -hmm. um you know like when you just when you're watching tv and you're sapping channels so when you're listening to the radio someone else dictates your cultural intake and as i grow older i'm like I'm not interested in that. This is what I want to listen to. This is what I want to read. This is what I want to watch. I think that that for me is like, I got rid of all the TV channels, everything. I'm like, I mean, streaming services, of course, but the, then I can actually choose sure, what yeah. I want to watch. So, I mean, it's it's just, I think that's also for me, just like um, the disposal of time. Like, how do, how do I dispose my time? <laughs> that is the most valuable thing as we get older, man. I, and that's something that you should teach people in school. Like how important yeah. every minute of your life is because you don't, you know, yes. I don't need to yeah, waste. Yeah. Like I have friends that are, Oh my God, check out this video. This guy really sucks. And I'm like, why, why, yeah, why, why am I going to waste 10 minutes of my life on a terrible thing? You know? <laughs> I mean, if, if it's terrible enough, well, yeah, <laughs> to where it's comedy. But it's bad, yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, it ties in with a lot. I mean, we live in a culture where um, if we put out a bad record, or no, not, let's not use us as an example. Too many people have too many, there's too many opinions about what we do. But yeah, if Slayer puts out a new record and I don't like it, you know what I do? I continue with my life. Yeah, don't listen I don't to it. The need or the urge to go on their Instagram, on their Facebook, and be like, "Your record sucks. You sold out." <laughs> it blows my mind that people take the time to do stuff like that. I'm like, why? I mean, I don't know. It's it's a bit. It, speaking of time and and doing something constructive with your time <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i you know i see you see it with tv shows too like oh the finale of this show sucked it's like well you, well, you don't watch it <laughs> <laughs> no one forced you to watch why this. are you watching yeah. this because everybody yeah. else is watching it and you want to be able to talk to them about it like come on man yeah, yeah. you know it, so there's some, yeah there's something about the uh uh the democratization of everyone's voices with like Twitter and Instagram and social media where uh, everyone has an opinion yeah. and everyone thinks they're, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that their opinion doesn't matter, but um, a lot of the people that do the negative comments on, on YouTube or on, you know, bands pages, they used to be the person that just sat in the room, screamed at the wall. And now all of a sudden they have this voice where they can be like, my voice matters. And and as an artist, it can be quite disheartening when, like, you know, you see all those comments. You're like, well, this this person obviously didn't listen to the record or obviously didn't. So it's a bit weird that um, uh, social media gave everyone a voice, voice to, you know, say whatever nonsense they wanted. I yeah. mean, I guess it's fine, but it's a, it's a bit frustrating at times. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're trying to use it in a positive way, like for me, for example, I have no, like, I shouldn't have this show. It exists and it's been doing well and I'm very happy for it. But my opinion shouldn't like, you know, be 
better than anybody else's or above anybody else's. Uh, but, you know, I try and not talk trash. I just make it positive. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I feel like, you know, your message in your music a lot of the time is very uh, a, a political or, you know, anti-establishment, uh, anti-oppression and all of that. And I'm not saying that oppression doesn't exist. Obviously, it still does. But I feel like the bigger problem now is that what we're talking about? The social media, the people that are using it as a platform for hatred, and also, you know, those oppressive forces that are using that as a as a way to continue their oppression. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's a, <clears throat> it's a perfect way to spread fear and misinformation, and and uh, you know, we all saw what happened when people came out of anti vaxxers and oh. you know all the nonsense that goes on, and I mean social media is used in, in a in a quite deliberate warfare against people. And I mean, it's a perfect way to divide and conquer. So yeah, I mean, all the problems that we always talked about, they're still there. I mean, obviously things aren't really great moving or in the right direction. Good no. or even good. <laughs> yeah. No, but but I mean definitely like like the internet and social media definitely um amplifies a lot of these problems and and um with the algorithms and and the way people consume uh, media it, it definitely made for a more pol polarizing society and it definitely made as you said i mean a lot of people use their time and their energy to to spread hatred and fear and misinformation and and uh you know i i think politics has become a game of uh you know you 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 see someone, they say something and you take it out of context and you twist it, and that's politics. And I mean, for me, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, that's just that's just weird. And um, that's we had an election in Sweden two days ago, and that the whole whole debate climate leading up to the election was just like it was just that he said this, he must be the real fascist. And you're like, that's, that's not what you know. But it it, it is definitely problematic with with the way that. Um, social media shapes our lives yeah it's a it's a very weird thing uh you know i have a constant struggle internally with that because i like i mentioned i grew up you know punk rock very diy mm -hmm. very you know let's fight fight the system and you as i get older that becomes blurry it and like overwhelming maybe but just kind of like how do i fight the system when it's it feels so uh, overpowering and then uh, it's the same with social media like <clears throat> i don't want social media to go away because that's how i communicate with friends from across the country that's how i you know i'm able to have this show musicians are able to promote their albums but how do yeah. you how do you how do you can not control see that's the thing that's the that's the debate in my mind how, how do we yeah. fix this well, maybe by controlling it or maybe by introducing, you need a permit to post online. Then it becomes, yeah. then now you're like, oh, well, that's oppression. I don't need a permit. It should be freedom of speech. Yeah. You know, so it's like a back and it's just feels very blurry. Yeah. And I mean, how do you balance out the, the positive aspects of, as you said, like you're able to communicate with your friends where we'll sit here uh, in real time talking to each other mm -hmm. across the globe. Yeah. Pretty amazing, you know? Yeah. But how do you balance that with, with, with the, everything that goes on that, that's definitely not great for us, you know? So, it, I mean, to, to be fair, uh, social media, the internet, everything, this, this um, information, obesity that we have and everything that goes on, all of this is quite new. And uh, I am hoping that we can balance it out and make, make for a climate where... Um, these things can use be used as constructive tools to, to build a better world. Uh, but then maybe, and that's the tricky part, like maybe you need to adjust some of the ways that we use it, adjust some of the, of the parameters for, uh, you know, how to, how to, how to use it. But yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not really, if I had solutions to these problems, I would be at the Nobel Peace Prize dinner and not talking to you. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. And yeah, and it's, you know, the only thing I could even possibly think of is that, that we should start at in schools, you know, educate yeah, the kids sure. on how to properly yeah. use it. How, you know, mm -hmm. instead of teaching them 
you know, calculus, which no one really uses unless they're going to become a rocket scientist or something. Like, teach them about being good, a good person, uh, not yeah, yeah. all that kind of thing. Like, I, I don't know. There's, I feel like there should be ways, um, but it's a, it's a fight that, you know, sometimes you just want to give up uh, the fight. Yeah. And the same yeah. happened with, you know, with me. And I used to be very, like, put on a, a black ski mask and let's go protest and you know like set you know whenever there's like a a convention of po politicians go protest and like i can't i can't i don't i don't see any movement in the positive direction so it just feels like a, a waste of time and maybe i could use my time wise you know wiser by doing other yeah. things i don't know yeah yeah i think i mean that's i think we all it was interesting in the 90s when when we came out, when, when Refuse became like a bigger band well, in our little world, you know, mm. how people had a very clearly defined idea about what a political activist was and how people could come down on us and be like, well, you're not politically active enough because you're not doing this and this and this. And then we were always say, well, what we do is with the band is, is political activism. And then you had to sort of, once again, like balancing out, like, how do I, you know, how do I live a life and still be active in my mind and, and active on, you know, on things that matter. And I think a lot of people that I met in the 90s, they're really gung-ho about the, the direct action and the protests and, and all that stuff. They are really burned out really quickly because yeah. it, it kind of overtook their entire lives and identity. And, and then, um, you know, for, for me, I always said this, every, every we play live all the time, I say, the revolution is not a sprint. It's a fucking marathon, you know, like trying to change the world is a marathon. And a lot of people, when, when, when they, they claim the identity of, of the revolutionary and then you, you don't overthrow capitalism within like two years, then it's kind of disheartening and you want to give up. And, and for me, it hasn't been, I mean, I still go to protests. I still go to demonstrations. I still, you know, pull my weight as much as I can. Every night I get up on stage, I talk about politics. Every fucking record we, we put out is politics. Uh, but then to find that balance with, with living your life, you know, being a person that uh, your friends want to hang out with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a few of those friends that are unbearable. They're not, you know, I can't be around them. I just too much. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know, that that's when, when something anything not not just politics but when something becomes such a big part of, of your identity that you can't really meet other people then it is a problem and i mean whatever it's being like oh, I, i'm really punk so i can't hang out with people that are not punk i mean that's just yeah you know it's not very constructive like yeah. we're we're most of us are are multifaceted individuals that have all these different um, ideas and emotions and um interestingly enough being a human like you have a lot of contradict contradicting ideas and emotions. Mm -hmm. Like you can, I mean, um, I really dislike capitalism. I think capitalism is the root of problems. I love buying records. You know, there's all <laughs> these like, you know, like like you are. Uh, there's all these contradictions within us, and and uh, especially living in this world that's quite uh, fragmented and, and 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 confusing. I mean, that's just a part of being a, a human being. And if you if you if you become too rigid, then you also become quite unbearable. Yeah. yeah. And this is something that I've learned from, <laughs> from, my, from my own mistakes. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, like, and, and I'm not putting, I'm not throwing shade as the kids say, I'm not throwing shade at you in any way, but like that, that contradictory behavior, like you mentioned, that's one of the reasons I like, I, I love what you do. Um, but you know, you think about, your earlier days, very, you know, gung ho against, uh, establishments and, and corporations and, and all of that. But then we see you, uh, putting out a record with a big video game company, uh, that kind of, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's great. I love cyberpunk. It was an amazing game. Uh, I know that a lot of people didn't think so. I loved every minute of it. Uh, but you know, that's something that you think about like, Oh, well, is that selling out? Like, did they sell out? What's going on? Like, it's a weird, you know, contradictory thing. <laughs> yeah, I think it's for me. Um, as a conversation that was, I mean, as a as a kid of like you know of the '90s hardcore scene, 
the selling out conversation was like every conversation well, yeah. you ever had <laughs> with anyone in the 90s. And then it, the, there was a point when, when all that tipped over, because I mean, I'm 50 years old. I've been doing punk rock, political hardcore for the past 35 years. <sighs> There's got to be a point where I'm like, well, I'm not really, you know, I'm not doing this because of this and this. I'm, this is actually just who I am. Mm. So I think there was a point when people like, I mean, I, you you can still hear the cries of sell at once in a while. But most people are like, well, these people are lifers. They're kind of the real deal. Um, once again, making the balance like, so, yes, we did. We did write music for a video game right after we released a record called war music yeah. so, i mean you know it's that's what it is you yeah. know it's yeah. like 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 you do some you know um and i think still talking about sellout and the, the concept of what that means um i think you sell out when you stop being true to who you are and when you stop being curious and when you stop being like uh excited about life mm. then you become sort of a sellout I mean, you know, there are plenty of bands out there that never sold out and they just kind of did the same thing. I mean, you know, maybe maybe that's the sell. <laughs> I don't know, you know, maybe well, maybe they love doing it. So, you know, but it, it is interesting because I've always been true to the next idea for myself. Uh, the political foundation that I have, that's never going to change. That's just who I am. And yeah. I mean, Sometimes you put out an invasion record, not overtly political, but you can see the sprinkles of, of my ideas in, in it. And then you put out a refused record called War Music, which all politics. Yeah. And, and, you know, so, so it's, it's just a matter of like, once again, we're multifaceted individuals. Uh, and um, some days your focus is over here, and some days your focus is over there. But then as we grow older, the core identity of who you are doesn't really change. I think if, if, no, if I mean, sometimes maybe something really drastic happens and you, you know, but, but for most of us, like, you know, we're once we're past like our 35 years old, you're pretty set in who, what you think about the world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, in terms of selling out, like I, I only think of it uh, as, as a real sellout. If you go and you start combining yourself with or working with, major corporations and i'm talking like coca-cola like you know the big the big big bad ones uh you know yeah. a cd project red is a small video game company i'm not too worried about it you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. no i'm not even yeah but like yeah. Uh, you know it, it's it's just an interesting like you said I, in life is multifaceted your opinions change the older you get like even with me and i'm not i'm gonna say this uh with with all due respect and i'm going to do it just so that people know i'm not a poser uh but you know <laughs> we'll see about that now <laughs> yeah right refused uh up you know i mean in the right before the break you know the shape of punk to come was you know life-changing record for me it, 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 that first line to start the album with uh, i got a bone to pick and a few to break like that defined <laughs> Most of my twenties, <laughs> that was such a good line and, and just so intense. And, um, you know, I spent that amount of time. That's what, that's what I started analyzing later on. So from the break, which was what? 99, 90, and then 98, 98 yeah. to yeah. 2015. That's how much time I spent with that record. You know what I mean? That's, that's, I listened to it religiously, monthly, whatever you want to say for that many years. So when Freedom came out, the first song, Electra, came out, I was like, oh, my God, they're back. And, and, and you know, I went crazy. And then uh, the, the, the record itself, I wasn't open to the idea of you guys working with a pop producer. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wasn't open to it. I was just like, oh, no, what happened? And then uh, afterwards, years later, War Music comes out. I was like, oh, it's a return. It feels like a return to the angry really rock heavy or you know more hardcore punk heavy uh version of you guys and and then i went back and heard freedom and i'm like i was just being an idiot i was just being an idiot i wasn't paying attention that's what it was i was setting my ways for so many years you yeah know? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna tell you something funny about that the free i mean freedom 
it was it was tough you know like we could have come out as the second coming of christ and people still being like i don't know because sure. because you know, yeah. that's and we kind of knew we were like we're up against some impossible odds because exactly what you said a lot of people spent you know like 15 years losing the shape of punk to come the formative years like you, you met your partner and you listen you know like mm-hmm. there's all these fucking parameters to to how the importance of that record and then you're like here's a new here's new music and people like eh you know but the interesting part about freedom is that the pop producer that we worked with we only worked with him on two songs yeah and it's electra and 366 where the two songs on the record that sounds most like old refuse right (laughs) because the guy the pop producer his favorite bands are like uh, refused breach he's into like hardcore music he was like a hardcore metal drummer before he became a pop producer so the two songs on the record that he produced are the songs that sounds most like old refused anything that we did ourselves that's just like us you know so it's interesting because a lot of people have that reaction and i mean being the kind of dicks that we are we're like it's really important that it says in the fucking bio that we're working with Taylor Swift's producer. Because <laughs> that's kind of how we think about things. We're like, we're gonna piss people off. And a lot of people got pissed off. And then, you know, some people are like, well, Electra song is pretty ripping. I'm like, yeah, that's the one he produced. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just funny that, yeah. you know, as you say, like you're, you're, a, you're a preconceived notion of what it should be. And then, I mean, there's a lot of songs on that record that that, yeah, they're a bit weird. And we're definitely like, feeling our way a little bit because i mean we hadn't it's like 14 years of not writing music together so there's definitely some like where we put out some feelers and like can we do this can we do that uh but yeah it's just interesting <laughs> yeah yeah because i mean my brain automatically like i read the bio working with pop producer and then i you know i listened to the album and i was just like i didn't read the details that it was those songs yeah, yeah, that he worked so i was like oh man i don't know and then you know so i wanted to clarify to people like i was an idiot <laughs> And then I went back and listened and also just taking into account what you guys, what you just said, there's nothing more punk rock than that. Like getting, getting a producer that was worked Taylor Swift or Britney Spears and, yeah. and making them do a, you know, refuse record. It just, yeah, yeah. that's incredibly yeah. like, fuck you in the face. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of how we operate. I mean, we're, we're very, uh, we're very high on self-sabotage. We love <laughs> to kind of fuck with people's, idea what we should be or how we should behave and you know so and and i mean create writing freedom i mean as i said it, it was a it was a, a tall order no no matter how you turn it and that re- that's a record that we felt like we needed to create and then with war music i felt much more i think we felt much more in tune with what we are as a band, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Because we, you know, you sometimes you need to sort of like, you need to do something so that you can take the next step. And I, I feel that Freedom is one of those records. Like we needed to do that record. And um, looking back at, it, I'm like, yeah, there's a couple of things I would change. I would change on that one if I could. But it, it was at that time and point we needed to create that piece of art so that we could do more music, so that we can continue to be a band, basically. Yeah. So it, speaking of that, uh, it's been uh, War Music 2019. We went through yeah. a couple of years of craziness with the pandemic. Um, yeah. Have you guys been writing for a new Refused? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We we are. We're. I mean, it, it's been. We. War Music came out in 2019, and um, people liked it. Um, and we started touring and the touring went really well. Uh, but we only did, I mean, obviously for obvious season, we only did a little bit of touring Mm. and, uh, we did a tour of the States. I mean, we did a tour of the States. I flew home from LA the day they shut down the airports. Wow. It was wild. I, I landed in Umeå and the next day I was supposed to, uh, I was supposed to do like, a like a thing at the a book fair in town and that got shut down. And when I landed in, in Sweden, they were like, well, they shut down all the airports in the States. Like 
this is actually happening for real. Mm. So during that U.S. tour, it's interesting because we played we played seven new songs in the set, and people really liked it. The reviews were great. People loved the show. So we felt like give this record some time and momentum. Uh, we were thinking like by the the fall of 2020, when we come back to the states to maybe do Riot Fest, you know, all those things. People we love this record, and then the pandemic happened, and um, it really took the wind out of our sails. It was really kind of disheartening to be like, you know, after freedom, uh, you know, to feel like okay, now we're gaining some momentum. People are enjoying the new record. A lot of the songs from War Music, they're so much fun to play live, and then to have that taken away. I mean, we're, I mean, you know, everybody got fucking. Yeah. knocked down by the pandemic but it took us a long time to sort of get our bearings right because yeah it was quite quite disheartening they were like all right so what do we do now like you know and because obviously then with the pandemic the record didn't really go anywhere um so it took us a long time but yes we are writing new music we have a bunch of demos everyone's a little bit busy at the moment but um I am hoping that there will be new music next year. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah you know, it's really important. I'm hoping. I'm not, I'm not going to make any promises because we <laughs> move really slowly would refuse. But uh, there's demos, there's songs, there's ideas. Some of it's fucking super fun. And, and um, there's a sense of creative freedom that, that's, uh, that's quite refreshing. So it's, it's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, we're in a good place right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very unfortunate thing because, like you were saying, the momentum for more music, and it was like the right time because everybody in the states was very politically charged with Trump in office. Everybody had yeah, yeah. everybody had an opinion, and it was either they're very angry about Trump or they're very angry about people against Trump. And it was war music because we were basically in yeah. a war. People were talking about yeah. civil war happening, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was very very appropriate. And it's just unfortunate it didn't get to play out. Uh, I mean. When it when it comes to this new record, not that politics have changed much, it still sucks. Um, but how much of it, how much of American politics affects your writing? You know, living in Sweden, and I mean, how how are the politics in Sweden? Are they similar? Because I've heard good things from over here <laughs> about Sweden. Yeah, that's all going to change, though. Um, American politics affect everything that happens in the world, mm -hmm. so whenever there's some nonsense going on over in the States, it, it affects us. I mean, because, you know, because of the country that America is. And uh, also being someone that I have so many friends in the States. I mean, I've toured the States more times than I can count. You obviously keep your, your antenna out and be like, okay, what's going on now? And um, they, they, I mean, the good thing from European perspective is that it, not much is going on in the States right now. I guess that's kind of, I mean, it's better than Trump, where it's like every week you're like, but this has to be like the low point of <laughs> politics. And then next week, like, oh, no, no, there's no bottom to this madness. So, I mean, I guess that's a, that's a good thing. But, yeah, it, affe it affects how you write because uh, a lot of the ideas that we talk about, they are international. They're, 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 they're applicable for the entire world. I mean, if you talk about economic and political social structures it's not just sweden it's it's the entire world and stuff that happens in sweden or in europe is affected by what happens in the states and what, vice versa you know so i mean it, it, it does but I, I must say i didn't really want to talk about it because it's insanely depressing but we had an election two days ago and um we have a bunch of political parties in Sweden. We don't have like the states where you have two opposing sides. Yeah, but red versus blue. <laughs> what happened the last couple of elections is that the right wing people kind of formed alliances and then the left, left wing, there are no real left wing people, but that's a whole nother conversation. But the le leftist the leaning has formed alliances. So there's two, basically two, two blocks of people. And uh, the last election, uh, a party called the Swedish Democrats got somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of the votes they were started in the 80s by nazis Oof. and they're the second biggest party in sweden right now and um 
their whole political agenda is just like no immigrants, get rid of immigration. People need to return to their home countries. They talk a lot about uh, eth- ethnicity and um, they hate culture. They have music. They hate arts. They're fucking horrible. And they're the second biggest political party in Sweden. And the right wing uh, alliance won the election. Oof. So there's going to be some real changes in Sweden. And um, if you are a person of color, there's going to be some trouble. If you are sick, there's going to be trouble. If you are unemployed, there's going to be trouble. Uh, it, it's it's not a great look for Sweden. And Sweden used to be a country where, as you said, you hear good things about Sweden. When I travel the world, there's a lot of goodwill towards Sweden because we were a, a country based on the idea of solidarity and equality. And uh, there's been waves of immigrants coming to Sweden where we assimilated them, taking care of them. And now we're, we're just, I mean, it's fucking, we're, uh, the Swedish Democrats, Democrats is the biggest party in the world that uh, has roots in Nazism. It's fucking insane. Yeah, man. That's wild. They had 300, listen to this. In the last 10 years, or it's not even 10 years, they've had 300 people of their party expelled because of Nazi connections. 300 people. Jesus. That's- in a political party in Sweden, you're like... Yeah. So it's 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 been it's kind of bleak over here at the moment, and and a lot of people like, as I said, something growing up in in a, in a society where we did talk about solidarity, we took care of each other, and I always talk about like the the reason why I'm so loud and I'm I talk so much is because I, I'm a, I'm strong, you know, and I need to speak for the people that are not as fortunate as I am, and the reason why you are strong is that you can help. Uh, people are not as strong as you, and uh, we're definitely not going in the, that direction in Sweden. So it's it's quite frustrating. Um, hopefully, fodder for a whole lot of lyrics. Yeah, that's kind <laughs> of what I said. Yeah. That's what I said when Trump got uh, elected here yeah. in the states. I was like, well, at least we're going to get a bunch of really good punk albums out of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's and that, that's. I'm you know I'm no politician. I am a musician and. Uh, a lot of this frustration, you know, you, you, you channel it into the music and that's kind of what you do. And that's, um, that's kind of how you, you know, you can cope with the world basically. Like you can cope with these things and you, you have this channel. It's funny. Um, I started a new band during the pandemic. Okay. Uh, it's like a punk band where I I, used, I play guitar and uh, Sarah from Invasion and uh, the Donuts and uh, International Noise Conspiracy, she sings and plays bass. Mm. And it was right when the pandemic was happening. It was a Black Lives Matter protest. I think I wrote 30 songs in like three months because it's so easy. It was just like every day I'm like, oh, that's a song You're just waiting to be written. Uh, and I'm hoping that that might be the only positive outcome of this election. <laughs> Jeez. Is that, some songs. Do you feel that uh, you would leave Sweden if uh, things got really dark? No, I think that, <clears throat> I think what we need is, is uh, for people to actually stay here and, and you know, fight, fucking, they fight the, they take the fight, you know? And, and I think, it is interesting because, I mean, I never left the small town where I grew up in because I feel the same way about, like, if you want a, a, a scene or, or an art movement or culture, people actually need to be there for that and yeah. not just move to Stockholm or New York or whatever. So I, I, I feel a, somewhat of a responsibility to, to be engaged in, in uh, where I live. And, I mean, me and my partner actually talked about just yesterday after the election, we're like, maybe we should actually get politically uh, active for real, not just talk about it on social media or in songs, but actually get politically activate, uh, active because maybe that's what it takes, you know? Yeah. So we'll see. Well, hopefully it's not as bad as it seems. I mean, it's all, it's bad. It's not a good look. It is bad. Uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we- we'll see. I mean, it, the, the, it's, it's still early days, but I mean, uh, the, the Sweden Democrats, I mean, they, they've been, <laughs> it's interesting because all the other right-wing parties have said for years that they're not going to cooperate with the Swedish Democrats. 
And then a year ago, they just did a full 180 and they were like, well, we're just going to embrace them. And, you know, they're going to be part of our alliance. Everyone's like, yeah, that's not going to work out great. So actually the biggest right wing party got usurped by the Swedish Democrats. I mean, they lost a lot of voters and the Swedish Democrats, they just gained a lot of voters. I'm like, yeah, good. You know, so we'll see what happens. I think um, there's going to be trouble when they try to form a government because uh, the, the Swedish Democrats are like the second biggest party. And I think they want posts. Mm. But the other parties said, well, we want to form an alliance with them. But we, we don't want to give them posts. So it's, it's going to, I don't know. It, it, it might get messy. Oh, man. We'll, well see. I, yeah. I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't. I mean, I... I we, I, I got to a point when Trump was in office that I thought there was no recovery, and it's yeah. not that we have recovered. It's still pretty weird over here, but um, yeah. and there's still the looming maybe in the next election he comes back. So, but we made it kind of through yeah. Trump. Yeah. Um, so I, we did. I have hope that <laughs> that you guys will make it through this, even though it's a terrible I, I hope so. association. I hope so, yeah, it, it, yeah it, it is like I, I take some solace in that. I'm like talking to my partner and I'm like, well, I mean, all my friends in the States couldn't believe when Trump got elected. And I mean, they made it through like, you know, so, so hopefully, hopefully we can make it through this one as well. Yeah, man. I've told the story before on the show. I was at a daughter's, you know, the band daughters. Yeah. Yeah. I went, I was at a daughter's show when, uh, when Trump got elected the night he got elected and everybody in the room, you could just feel it like a where everything. Oh yeah. no. <laughs> like, uh, I left. I didn't. I watched two songs and I left because I was depressed and also I was kind of concerned because I started feeling this. I don't know if you've ever been in a room where something is about to happen or like a. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. It felt like something. Was about, yeah. Mount, you know. Yeah, yeah. I felt it in the air. I'm like, I don't want to get shot out here. This is gonna get crazy. I'm going home. <laughs> uh, uh, but you know. It, like I said, we made it past that. So let's talk about something a little bit more chipper, a little more, a little happier. Um, <laughs> sh the, the Shape of Punk to Come is about to turn yeah. 25. Yeah. Do you have any big plans? Uh, you know, perhaps a anniversary show tour thing. That seems to be a popular thing for people. Uh, the Or a repress of the vinyl, anything like that? Uh, we're working on some some vinyl stuff. Okay. Uh, we'll see. I mean, it's one of those deals where it's like, because we just did the songs to fan the flames, mm -hmm. twenty five year anniversary with like a ton of cool demos and unreleased tracks. There's not a whole lot of stuff around shape that we didn't release, mm. but uh, there's a bunch of stuff that we. I mean, so we're working on on something. I don't think there'll be shows, but I'm not sure. I can't rule it out, but. It just feels like what it feels. I think it would feel like what we did in 2012, right? You know, because so, but we'll see. I'm not. I'm not ruling anything out. It is. It is quite wild that it's turning 25 uh, next year, and we're going to do something to celebrate it. I, I'm not really sure what yet, though. So you should do one show in LA for me personally yes. no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um yeah no that's that you know i was gonna say you know what they should what maybe i don't know if you have access to this stuff but one thing that was really impactful for me in 2015 when you guys did i think it was 2015 coachella when you guys did your big was it coachella oh, that was 2012 2012 yeah, 2012, 2012. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did your big coachella comeback uh that show was incredible like the audience was really into it. The performance was amazing, and I can't find it on, online anywhere. Oh, I want to YouTube it. I yeah, they filmed it yeah. professionally. I watched the live stream; it was great. Yeah. But then I can't find it. And what I have is a lot of cell phone footage. So, yeah, that one. Too. So if you guys yeah, can I mean, get that footage and put it in a DVD or something, that would be a good thing to add to the. That's that's not a bad idea. Just, I have to. I have to see and check because I mean I know I have a lot of friends back home in Sweden that watch the live stream and we got a lot of happy texts after that show so yeah that would definitely be something that we should uh, look into yeah yeah how was, <laughs> how was the uh, how did you feel you know considering your last show was in front of like fifty people and the cops yep. broke it up and everything what was it like for you going on that stage in 2012 on Coachella and having that visceral like mass crowd kind of blow up in your face? I mean, 
for me, it was fine. I, I mean, Noise Conspiracy played Coachella twice. Mm. Um, we did do a lot of big festivals. And I mean, um, Noise Conspiracy was much, much, much bigger than Refused ever was in the 90s. Yeah. So, I mean, I was, but for the rest of the guys, I think it was quite terrifying. I mean, none of them, um, none of them, I mean, David did like a solo record, a couple of solo records, then he played guitar and sang in front of like 100 people, you know. But the other guys, they hadn't really played live since we broke up. Oh, wow. So I think for them, I mean, I was obviously very nervous, but it wasn't as nerve wracking as it was for the other guys because I had played on big stages. I played, I mean, Noise Conspiracy played the main stage at Coachella whenever that was. I mean, it was super early in the middle of the day, but, you know, we, we were at the main stage. And so I've done that trip. Um, but yeah, I was, I was a bit nervous. I think the other guys were terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we're getting, we're getting close to an hour, so I want to ask you a couple of, like random, just to get to know you questions a little bit. All right. Um, so when you hit a new city on tour, what's what's what do you do when you get there after sound check, after load in? Do you go out into the city? Do you get food? Do you look at records? Like what do you what do you what's your favorite thing to do? Like you just said my favorite thing: <laughs> get food and records. Food and records. <laughs> <laughs> I have. Uh... I have two apps on my phone that I use. It's Happy Cow, which is like the vegan uh, food. The, how do you find vegan food in this city? Mm, okay. And then there's a there's an app called the Vinyl District, which is like the a vinyl uh, record, like where are the record stores basically. So I, that's what I do. And if if there's time, I'll I'll try to hit up a museum or something. But yeah, vegan food, record stores, maybe some vegan food, oh, yeah, maybe a museum. Yeah. Okay. How, how many records do you have in your collection? Do you have it? Do you have it categorized? Do you have a list? Yep. I have a. I have twelve thousand five hundred records. Ah, <laughs> uh, you could tell that uh, Sweden doesn't get a lot of natural disasters, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is my record room. I you can't. I mean, there's there's records everywhere in this room, but. Yeah. yeah, I'm at about 500, which is like nothing compared to your collection. And I'm worried. It's still a collection. It's still a collection. Yeah, 500 is not, a, not, it's not nothing. And uh... No, it's not nothing at all. I mean, I have to say, um, I have a bit of a problem. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the amount of records I have, I mean, if people have anything over 200 records, that's a collection. Mm-hmm. I went a little bit overboard with things, you know. Yeah, I mean, my concern mostly living in Los Angeles is like, what do I do if there's a big earthquake? You know, which records do yeah. I grab? I feel like I should have a box with like my most prized possessions that I could just grab yes. and run away yeah. with. Uh, but yeah, that, that's and that and also just move if I ever move because I'm not, you know, I don't I move around too much. I'm like, how are you going to move twelve thousand records? I mean. Those those movers are going to hate this you. House. <laughs> we moved to this house. Um, it's coming up in two years now. Yeah, it was horrible. Oh no, <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah, yeah. But no, so so okay. I was lucky enough that we we got the keys to the house the first of November. That's my birthday. And we did a lot of a lot of remodeling. So every day for all of November, I, I brought like like bags of records every day. So every day I moved a little bit for a mm. month. So that's how I did it. For a month I moved like I filled the car with records every every day for a month. Wow. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Yeah. That sounds too like too much. Yeah, I'm gonna try to limit myself now. Like, all right, I'm gonna pick my favorite bands and I'm gonna have every album from those bands. But like now, if it's a band I don't know and somebody just gives it to me, I'll give it to somebody else. Like I'm trying to control it, but it's it's hard. It's hard. It's so hard. Uh, I, have, I have too many favorite bands. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of bands, do you have any new bands that you're listening to regularly? Yeah, I mean, I listen to a lot of new music. I'm I'm very much. Uh, I think that. If people come out and say, "Oh, there's no good music being made today," they, then they don't listen to me. Yeah, they're not listening. There's so much good music coming out. Um, I mean, there's a, 
there's a lot of good hardcore out there. There's a lot of good like indie post punk stuff, and just you know, I don't know. I, I listen to a lot of new music. Okay. Okay. So no, no bands stick out that are like your favorites right now that are like constant rotation. Um, I listen to a, a Turkish psychedelic band called Alton Gun. That's fucking. That's one of those that keep returning to that record. Uh, I really love Turnstile. I'm just oh. gonna put it out there. Fucking amazing band. So good. Uh, Swedish band Viagra Boys. I listen to them a lot. Uh, Let's see what else I got going that, that, that's new. Um, there's an artist called Lingue Gnota that I think oh, is yeah. fabulous. Uh, she makes me I sad, know. so I can't listen to, to it too much. <laughs> I feel every yeah. time I listen to the album, I get really depressed. So I'm like, all right. Yeah, <laughs> but I, like I left that emotion. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a good feeling. I, yeah, you know, I have those types of days where I'm like, I need to hear that. Uh, but, yeah. you know. And what what else? Uh, what's that? Chubby and the Gang. It's pretty great. Okay. From the UK, like punk hardcore. I mean, there's a lot of good music out there. And I mean, I'm one of those dudes that that just um, every day I want to discover new music. Every day I want to hear a record that I haven't heard before. I mean, a lot of it's old, but it's stuff that I haven't heard before. So I'm I'm just like, uh, yeah, all the time, just trying to find music. All right, I guess I'll have to send you my uh, my band's old record from uh, 2000 and I don't even know, 12, I think, is the last album we put out. <laughs> Do it. I'll put that out for you. <laughs> if it's on vinyl, I'll, it'll, I'll put it in the I listen to it, I put it in the collection. It's fucking great. Awesome, man. Um, I just saw news that the, the team behind Cyberpunk is going to keep doing stuff. Um, are you guys going to continue your relationship with them? Uh, if they're going to do more movies or if they do anime or more games, like, is that something you're wanting to do? I would, I mean, yeah, I would love it. They're super cool to us. Um, they're really cool people. They're uh, massive fans basically. So I would love to, I know, I know that they're doing the, the samurai soundtrack that we did. I think it's going to get a vinyl release. Nice. Finally. Which is kind of cool because it's like, it's like not a new Refuse record, but it's like kind of close. <laughs> technically, yeah, technically, you know. Yeah. Okay. And then finally, I just had, you know, is, is there any venue uh, that you haven't performed at that you kind of like a fantasy venue? Um, and also, if you were to pick a fantasy tour package to play that venue, what would it be? Ooh. Wow. That is a dif difficult question. <laughs> um, let's see if there's any venues where I haven't. I mean, I've played a lot of venues. <laughs> like there's one, the, the I, common answer I get is the Red Rocks in Denver. Oh. That's a common never one. never played the Red Rocks. Yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool place to play. I mean, we did, we played Madison Square Garden mm. Theater. Okay. So that's Not attached. Not the big room. Yeah. I would like. That'd be cool. I mean, to play to to play Mad. I mean, to play Madison Square Garden proper would mm. be pretty pretty awesome. Okay. Um, and who would yeah. be on that bill? It would be Refuse and who else in Madison Square Garden? MSG. How many How many bands could I pick for this bill? Let's see, uh, five. five you five. including you, so four. And can it can it be bands that are not playing anymore? Can it, you know what's? I mean, it's a dream bill. I sure, guess. yeah, so. it's a dream bill. However you want it. Let's do Bikini Kill. Okay. We were supposed to play with Bikini Kill in 2020. Oh, <laughs> it didn't happen. Of, of for, well, I, I, we were supposed to play with them at a festival, and it was like that day it was us and Bikini Kill on the on the punk stage, and uh, that would have been rad. So let's say Bikini Kill. Uh, we'll do uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. They were kind of cool. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, one of my faves. So, so he should he should definitely be involved. Uh, let, let's see what else. Um, two more. Two more. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. I mean, it, it's like you, the the the. I would I would Voivod. I would have Voivod playing just because I love Voivod. I, I don't think they get the recognition that they deserve. Fucking Voivod. They've done play. some they've done some big tours here before the pandemic. I mean they were here yeah. with uh 
I, for, I forget who else there were. There, there, was, there were some big tours here, though. But. Yeah, I mean, the last two records are great. Yeah. Some Voivod. Oh, you know, well, what's, let's just, I mean, they play Misfits. Let's do Misfits as well. Yeah, they're still misfits, playing. Misfits, Cave, Voivod, Bikini Kill Refuse. That's a good show. That's a good show. I'll pay money to see that <laughs> at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the Misfits already play Madison Square Garden, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that could be your foot in the door to get in there. <laughs> exactly. That'd be uh, perfect. Well, Dennis, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, it's a real honor to talk to you. Like I said, I spent uh, 15 years, however long it was, jamming the same album. That's you know, that's not something that I've done with any other band, really. Um, <laughs> Uh, so huge influence on on myself and and my friends and uh, you know I'm I'm really glad to see that you're still going you're still making new refuse music, and and you're still cranking it out even after such a crazy, you know, couple of years of pandemic that most people yeah. would have given up but you're you're still going and I'm I'm happy for it. Um, where do people can where can people find all all they need to find about you online? Uh, just you on Instagram is that the best option? Yeah. I mean, my Instagram is not super exciting, but I'm pretty good at updating about my um, my all my different projects. I have so I'm I'm gonna do a little bit of blatant self promotion. No, here, please, but, uh, yes. The Invasion record that came out is fucking fabulous. Probably my, one of my favorite records I've put out. And then next year, there's a new Fake Names record coming. Oh, okay, great. Which is Oh, so good. So good. And then uh, my punk band where I play guitar, we have a record coming out next year as well. Okay. And what's that one? Venice Casino. Venice Casino? Venice is the town where I live okay. in the north of Sweden. Yeah, Venice Casino. All right. All right. It's pretty kick-ass. Uh, and then, yeah, so I'm I'm just trying to stay busy, you know, try to work on, on new music and then... Uh, Somewhere on the horizon, there is new refused music coming as well. Yeah, but I mean, both the fake names and the Venice Casino record—they're done, recorded, done, everything's done. So, just you know, trying to get get them out to the world. And I hope that we're going to do some touring with fake names next spring. That would be very cool. I would like to see that. I would be very, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> very excited to do that. So, yeah. Cool. Well, make sure you guys, uh, you're watching and listening, follow Dennis on social media so you can keep track of all these projects. Uh, I'll definitely be blasting out whenever Venice Casino comes out and, and the new fake name stuff. I'll be blasting it on social media. Um, yeah. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate it. I'm so glad we finally did this and hopefully yes, it's, it's not it's, the last time. Hopefully we can do it again. No, it's, it's been, it's been a long time coming and I'm glad we finally, finally made this happen. <laughs> Excellent, man. Well, thank you so much and uh, stay in touch. Don't get lost. Cheers. Thanks. Awesome, man. Uh, have a great day. Oh, and yeah. I'm going to have a great evening. It's 11 o'clock over here, so I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. It's 2 o'clock okay. here. I'm going to go have lunch. <laughs> awesome. Well, have a good one. Have I'll good talk day. to you soon, man. Take care.